the third and final session of our webinar. And um, I'd like to again go into introducing the topics, uh, the four key topics of the day. Uh, we'll give a little bit more relevance on the cash market side. Uh, the previous two sessions we've gone more in depth into the futures market and um, the link to the um, uh, volume profile and order flow analysis with uh, some insight as well on volume open interest and uh, open position trend analysis. So starting from uh, yesterday's situation, so um, the CPO benchmark following a 46 points higher opening at 28.57 traded consistently in a higher sideways consolidation, which was quite uh, relevant over the past couple of weeks in particular. But yesterday it was on a much higher trajectory. Uh, and this between the first resistance level at 28.48 and um, uh, the second resistance level at 28.84. This in a 33 points range by a midday close between 28.47 and 28.80. This was further strengthened from the higher price correlation uh, to the DC RBD all in January contract and the CBOP bin oil uh, December contract prices. Between 10 in the morning, the pre-opening at BMD and the midday close, uh, the CBOP soy bin oil December contract was trading 27 cents a pound higher, 33.81 while DC Alling uh, was trading between 112 and 120 points higher in a range at 59.86, 59.78 uh, mainly. Uh, the DC large positive linear association to BMD and the uh, AM session. Um, sorry, just bear me a second, let me just... Uh, Let me just close my trading platform. Sorry. So, <laughs> and the M session led to a support at um, 2878, 2883, or a 72 points price opportunity from the previous closing. This was followed quite um, remarkably by speculators on long positions which were traded above the nine day simple moving average uh, 2852 to a first resistance level of 2848. That yesterday was a very key support range uh, from which we saw the higher extension uh, into the close. So the afternoon opening at 2868 led to some covering and minor shorts by 16 points then progressively extending higher to 2860, 2870s, before taking off to 2902, this 15 minutes to the close. The strong CPO benchmark intraday progression was clearly anticipated again by the price correlation, in particular to the Dalian RBD uh, morning opening. Again, an intraday high by 160 points at uh, 6,026 um, by 9 a.m. and holding within 148, 150 points range at 6,016 by 11 a.m. and 6,014 by 13.45. These uh, were all uh, tops, uh, three separate tops that we have experienced between the morning and the opening of the daily and afternoon sessions and those showing not only uh, the support levels from the start but as well the uh, the opportunity for trading the highs um, throughout the day. So we saw bidding ranges, a uh, bidding range uh, strengthening from 2856 to 2907 which was perfectly in line with the price correlation at the Dalian between 59.42 and uh, 6,026, or um, an 11 to 36 dollar range intraday. This was based on um, the currency conversion for um, 
the dollar yuan at 6.8384 and the dollar ring at 4.1423. The 2950, uh, 3030 range seems a higher range where we believe upstream short hedging and long cavalry might take place. Um, this in line with uh, what is currently known in uh, fundamental terms from the release of production estimates over the past week and in particular from a couple of banks yesterday uh, which is in line with expectations although on a slightly higher range and um, we very much look forward to the Malaysian Power Mall Association full month production data in order to do an extrapolation versus the September estimates. So looking again into the CPO price correlation to CBOR and DC as we have done over the past uh, three sessions and this with reference to the forecasting of Malaysian and Indonesian August uh, supply levels mainly as demand is fairly priced in. We can see that looking into um, the yesterday's um, open, high and close levels, both at uh, CPO uh, futures at BMD versus the OPEX taken as a reference versus the um, slightly better price uh, range levels for uh, the Indonesian market, we see that um, based on the, um, the price range at both sides, we still have uh, Malaysia at a discount of eight dollars, eight nine dollars uh, versus the Indonesian CPO FOB prices, and and uh, we see Apex now at a discount, a narrowing discount of seven point six dollars from nine versus previous sessions, and this showing. In practical terms, a lower side range of uh, 27.98 to 28.80 at uh, BMD versus a higher range, which is at 29.30 to 30.30 uh, circa. Now, if we look at what is still supporting prices from a demand perspective, although demand is clearly seen lower by 11 12 percent uh, chinese demand is still driving the price progression as well as the uh, palm oil metal and uh, and downstream uh, businesses uh, price progression seeing <clears throat> 80 range higher or 19 to 20 dollars higher versus the dc correlation uh, still on concerns for uh, august supply and its extrapolation moving into the September output reading. And um, this with reference to um, prices leading into CPO spot FOB, $15 higher. Well, Indonesian um, auction markets at PPN uh, saw CPO spot rising as well in line by $11 or very close to it. So this were the lower supply levels and narrowing premiums at Apex uh, CPA futures to 7.6, while the local discount is widening versus the Indonesian FOB prices by $8. So as mentioned, overall prices are fundamentally in line with uh, very much the lower side range at uh, 2798, 2880 and uh, more realistically in a progression above 29, 29, 30 to 30, 28. Having said that, we have to take into consideration, and this is a case that was raised by one of the participants over the past three sessions, uh, the update versus the potential matching at the BMD side. If we look at where the Dalian and the Seabot are currently at the moment, we notice that uh, looking at uh, CBOR, that is uh, minor flexing 33.25 versus instead the Dalian, which is still in the region of uh, 24 to 28 points lower, and that showing potential for prices. 
uh, calculated based on that correlation opening around um, a much lower level around 2830s to 2850s of course we have to follow the progression for price being in correlated mode between 10 and 1030 in order to have an exact um, matching objective uh, but nevertheless that is what is seen at current timing which is 940 in the morning so looking into the market profile and all the flow in order to have a better understanding not only of the consolidation but as well of the price range you will notice that again some patterns yesterday pointed to a stronger strengthening market with um, a stronger directional move which was in line with the standard trend uh, trending day structure uh, the bmd price distribution extending in the morning from a 46 points higher opening at 28.57 to a higher matching between 28.60s and 80s uh, the lower matching in the uh, the couple final minutes and showing what was discussed as well in the previous day as the strongest support level so very very pleased with uh, with yesterday uh, between the uh, 10 a.m. BMD pre-opening and the midday close, the Dalian large positive linear relationship to BMD led to a support of 2878, uh, 2883. That was a very consistent upper sideways um, range, which we have seen traded now for the past couple of sessions. And this over 72 points price opportunity from the previous closing for speculators entering long positions as mentioned earlier above the nine day simple moving average uh, 2852 and the first resistance level at 2848 by the opening so between 10:30 and 11 a.m over the 30 minutes period we notice net longs extending to 3970 lots um, which met a resistance in uh, the 2840, 2873 range, uh, with long covering leading to net shorts increasing by 4,514 lots. This mainly on the um, UOB and CIMB estimates for local production levels recovering in August as well as in September. Um, UOB more specifically for the local market, CIMB extending that view on the Indonesian market, seen rising 15, 16% in September, which is very much in line with what is uh, being priced over the past week, 10 days uh, locally. Yet from 11.30, 12.30 net longs increased again to 2,523 lots consolidating in a higher range between 2865, 2875 and closing at 2873. So still again a higher consolidation with the lower sides of each range being very heavily bid and uh, building a higher consolidation then moving into uh, 2900 in the afternoon opening from 2866 uh, uh, leading yet more covering and minor shorts by 16 points but progressively extending higher uh, 2860s and 70s as mentioned before taking off to 2902 within 15 minutes uh, to the close uh, from 1630 1700 some 3575 lots that long move the range higher to 2861 to 2898 this again uh, higher consolidation in a wider range where the combination of covering from 2902 2883 and the final 30 minutes and this showing an overwhelming increase of shorts over the participation of 3670 lots traded over that period this as well could be an opportunities for those that may be um, 
short hedging or uh, speculatively uh, layering the shorts at that specific range. In particular, if the market opening lower this morning between 30s and 50s. So as mentioned over the past two days, um, this is a textbook price consolidation between first the 2760s, 2820s range, and then leading to the 2848, 2880 uh, range um, yesterday uh, with likely a progression, we believe that seems feasible to 29.29.50. Now looking into the cash market side, I'd like to focus a little bit more on this for the next 14 minutes because I believe this is where perhaps we may add a little bit more value with, with our webinar today. So discussing the uh, fiscal market yesterday that was focused again on supply forecasting and on the output concerns for uh, September and uh, the Q4 2020. So the CPO October, November, December uh, 2020 contracts were higher by the close by an average of uh, 79 ringgit. Uh, as higher front month CPO calendar spreads were bid, matching the view of inventories rising at best between 2 and 5% in August from a month earlier to uh, 1.73 million metric tons, with a modest increase in production by 1.8% to um, 1.84 million metric tons, and um, demand. 11.7% lower to 1.575 million metric tons. Inventories are still currently 20% lower on a yearly basis. And this is a discriminant versus prices, which is still seen as supportive. And um, this was uh, remarked as well in a Bloomberg note sent to the market <clears throat> yesterday afternoon. Uh, prior to the supply and demand estimates as released this morning for the um, August uh, period. The bearish estimate released in the morning by two local banks on the Melindo Palm Oil August and uh, September production did very little to slow prices. As mentioned earlier, at best that moved prices on a higher consolidation uh, within a uh, 30 points range, uh, yet UOB estimated production for full month uh, for August in a range of uh, one to five percent higher, or within a capacity of 1.82, 1.9 million metric ton, while TNB's view on the output has seen rising 6.4 percent month on month to 1.92 million metric ton. And in September, by 8.2% month on month. The CNB view on Indonesian palm oil production is to increase by 14% in August. Our view is an increase by 19% at least, because we're looking at uh, a much stronger stock depletion in Indonesia in the region of 33%, as discussed during the first webinar. And therefore, um, our basis variance is higher uh, versus uh, what expected by the banks uh, within a 14-15%, uh, while instead we're looking at a 19% increase uh, for uh, Indonesian palm oil production. We're looking as well at a 15% uh, increase by September which I believe is very much the view in the market and the cash market at the moment. The demand side of the supply and demand equation is fairly transparent. So demand is commonly seen now between um, minus 11.6 to minus 13%, realistically priced at 1.575 million metric tons versus a more bullish view of the um, uh, domestic consumption locally for 285,000 tons or a 2% increase month on month. And this mainly based on uh, higher local consumption given the uh, re uh, relaxed uh, movement uh, control order. 
this as production is uh, seen 1.77% higher month on month to uh, 1.84 million metric tons. The question that now most are asking is whether the uh, $8 Melinda premiums will narrow, given Indonesian organ, uh, August production is seen rising uh, to 3.9 million metric tons, almost 14%. This as uh, what we see still a 19% increase, but nevertheless, this as demand is falling in line with Malaysia by about 12%. With ending stocks um, again rising there in our view by at least 19%. High Indonesian uh, rising output may have an impact on uh, CPO spreads and flat prices. As we saw yesterday, the uh, CPO spreads from fund spreads uh, rising uh, much higher versus uh, the expectation and versus the estimates that was discussed in the market in the, mor uh, in the morning with uh, the likelihood of short layering at current levels. So looking into the more specifics of what is really supporting the price currently as priced at um, 706, $707 versus the um, uh, supply and demand uh, situation, we have mainly on the Indonesian uh, production side. Finally, finally, we have uh, production coming up 13 to 19%. Uh, inventories coming up 18%. Indonesian exports uh, still lower 12% in line with Malaysia. While locally production is rising um, at most 2% in line with inventories. So. I hope you may be able to see my cursor. If we look at this specific area, which is very relevant because that actually describes the price interaction on a hedging front at, um, in, for Southeast Asian, uh, mainly um, uh, millers and refiners uh, versus their expectation of uh, not only uh, spot supply but forward month supply, we see something quite interesting. So if we look at where the estimates are for the um, Indonesian production seen at 3.70, 3.9 million metric ton, these are actually 20% lower year on year. And this is remarking the concern for potential tightness moving forward. If we look as well at demand, demand is what is still very much uh, holding prices uh, versus the forecasting of uh, supply in Q4. And there is an element of, um, of a balance versus uh, current um, CPFOB prices in a premium between eight and nine dollars as seen over the past um, uh, three days with the likelihood of uh, further support moving between 706 and um, quite likely all the way up into eight hundred dollars and therefore supporting the view that we may actually see prices moving between 29.50 and 30.50. Yet again, what we have noticed based on historical patterns, uh, I'll leave those for you to, <laughs> to actually look into. Uh, there is a little bit of scribbling, but it's relevant and it's actually quite interesting, I hope, is that each time we see prices moving into a range of 750 and $800 at the CPO power market, we always have the uh, the narrowing of uh, the pound discount to uh, soybean oil, and in particular the oil in discount to soybean oil, flattering to uh, to zero, and that basically cutting off the um, price opportunity for subscriptions in the forward months, um, oil in versus uh, bean oil. And that is uh, something that we have to monitor extremely carefully 
as we notice over the past week and in particular the past three session as prices consolidated higher between uh, 2800 and uh, 2880 um, let's say 20, 27 and uh, 2760s and 2880s we had um, a stronger increase in the cash market side uh, with um, a widening that may be at some point put in check by the demand estimates for um, August and September, which more likely will still be uh, lower within 20% uh, variance on a monthly basis. Nevertheless, what we have learned from historical levels, again, as you can see from the chart, is that demand can quite literally implode, but as long as it's above the 1.3, 1.5 range, that still has a minor interaction in uh, counteracting uh, price increases. We had a prime example of that between December and January, um, December last year and January this year, when prices were very, very much leveled to a similar, to a similar range to where they are now. Uh, demand at the time, if not mistaken, moved much lower from 1.5, 1 1.6 to 1.2, 1.3, um, if not lower than that. At 1.2, uh, 1.1, we have practically the implosion. We have practically the implosion of um, what is the um, uh, what is the opportunity for uh, driving prices higher from a speculative perspective. Well, at that range, I strongly believe that the um, the Powell mid and um, Millers and uh, the uh, the palm refiners will more likely move in line with uh, producers into um, shorter speculative positions versus uh, the producers um, upstream um, view of layering prices um, again between seven fifty eight hundred dollars ideally. But we're looking realistically at 29.50 to 30.50 as uh, shorting levels. So moving into the volume price and open interest trend analysis. So what we noticed yesterday was the benchmark settled 81 points higher, 28.91, almost $700, $20, $19, dollars higher with aggregate higher participation to 60,569 lots, which is very decent volume, with an increase by 11,543 lots, which is quite remarkable intraday, uh, with higher open interest by 1,354 lots at 186, 857 lots, showing further strengthening and a higher trend consolidation between um, 28.48 more recently into 28.84. The expectation now is for the CPO November 20 contract this morning for an opening based on my last reading um, of the Dalian. Let's check that again. If it's still minus uh, 20, minus 30, yeah, it's still very much at 59.28. So still 20 six points lower 28 points lower and therefore looking at an opening realistically priced between 28 30s 28 50s but never the, nevertheless we have to as seen yesterday look at the high bidding from the downstream businesses that still see attractive uh, prices to their hedging and their sales in the forward months, uh, given their perspective of supply in forward months, versus an intraday low at 28.58, 28.25, and an intraday high at present realistically seen at 29.13 to 29.35. Having said that, of course, uh, we still have uh, a matching which starts quite literally now 
and we will have to look into how that moves uh, prices over the next 30 minutes versus so it seems 29.50 seems very much in line with expectation but again we have to be careful because the main buyer at the moment for CPO from an at variance perspective month to month is still the Chinese buyer and those commodity houses uh, will very much drive the price correlation with the Dalian side which is something very different and interesting that we've noticed yesterday versus previous sessions. Previous sessions we've seen CPO driving Dalian and as well to some degree uh, we've seen uh, CBOT following. Uh, yesterday it was quite different. Yesterday we saw um, a larger positive linear correlation uh, from the Dalian driving prices into the BNB. So we have to be more attentive on how that will influence the perspective, not only for the opening, but as well for the intraday play. And um, having said this, um, thank you for joining us over the past three uh, sessions, uh, webinar sessions. It's been a bit of an experiment because it's the first time that we lead these. As mentioned, uh, Previously, your uh, validation and feedback will drive my uh, senior management eventually to uh, put me to the test for a few more webinars from maybe uh, the next couple of weeks uh, to a more daily interaction. And um, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to voice. Uh, if not, I'm available on uh, on whatsapp uh, feel free to get in touch and um, and voice uh, your view and um, and your inquiries and i'll try and answer the best i can thank you marcelo okay feel free thank to you. drop your question in the question box we have one question here by Pook Wei leong do you uh, mr marcelo uh yep. what is your view about FCPO in coming months? That's, uh, that's a very interesting question because it's very much been debated with um, a number of sides that are actually looking into uh, Q4 uh, 2020 and Q1 uh, 2021. Um, I will be leading within a couple, well, actually within two weeks, um, a specific webinar, I hope, on this. But uh, realistically, what we're looking at, at the moment is for prices reaching 750 to 800 dollars at least, and therefore we are looking as well at a similar progression at the Dalian and at Cbot um, versus the BMD side. We're still very much looking at uh, 30, 30s, 30. 50s but it's not unlikely that we may see 3100s based on the 3050s 3100s we will have to monitor very carefully the progression for uh, supply levels in the power bull market not only in malaysia but as well in indonesia why because if by october we have what is expected to be uh, peaking for the uh, the main harvesting above let's say uh, the 15 uh, 14 to 16 percent increases in september then we will have um, a much stronger resistance for prices to appreciate further of course it's important that we follow uh, demand and how that narrows to an implosion moving into october and october will be will be quite relevant for this because again if we look at the um, historical patterns uh what we notice what we notice uh, from last year in 
in in the same period with same concerns of tightening in particular at the time in indonesia uh, what we notice is that when indonesian production level uh, spikes up uh, with uh, delay uh, versus uh, malaysia which we've seen more recently nevertheless as that comes up and as that basically narrows uh, the premiums versus uh, locally uh, cpo fob prices then we have a stronger selling hedging again that selling hedging is from what i expect around um, 750 uh, 800 uh, dollar levels and i think that is where realistically we, we have to we have to look into uh, the opportunity of, of shorting more heavily. So $750 levels at current price rates are around, uh, sorry, uh, current uh, dollar ringer rates are around, let's say, realistically 3100 I think 3100 would be um, very interesting for um, uh, short selling activities, as uh, speculative and hedging. Um, 700 to 750 is where there will be a layering, not only from the speculators but the hedgers as well. And um, 725 is where more realistically we will have most of that activity starting. Uh, 725, if not mistaken, versus the dollar ring currency rate that should be around uh, 3,000. So uh, 3,000, 3,050 is where the bulk of the shorts will come in. And um, yeah, I hope I've answered the question. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, we do not have any question more. If you have any question, feel free to contact Marcelo as the slide shown in the last slide. Marcelo, can you Sorry. please put up? Yeah, yeah apologies. Yeah. So this is the contact, feel free to contact us. So thank you for Marcelo for today sharing. Thank you all. Thank you, Jocelyn. Uh, thank you, James. And uh, thank you to all the attendees uh, for your presence over the past three days. And uh, I hope the feedback uh, will be as good as to continue this interaction on a daily basis. If you believe that was relevant enough, if not, feel free anyway to get in touch and um, and build perspective, not only in the futures, but in the cash market as progressively we see the shifting of supply and demand expectations. And uh, having said that, I have to jump back to the clients and uh, thank you very much and uh, have a great weekend ahead as well.